this innovative individual transformed an expensive luxury into one that's affordable to the middle class. This business magnate revolutionized the automobile and transportation industry. This innovator was the creator of many business practices that we use to this day, including the assembly line technique of mass production. This is the story of the man who made history in the automobile industry, the man who was successful enough to become America's second billionaire, Henry Ford. Let's find out how much you know about the man behind the blue oval logo and how he became the second richest man in America in his time. At the age of 12, Henry Ford's father gave him a pocket watch. He took his time taking apart and reassembling it repeatedly until he mastered the art of repairing watches and was known as a watch repairman. At 12, he was already working his way to becoming a mechanical genius. Henry Ford was born in 1863 on a farm in Springwells Township, Michigan to William Ford and Mary Ford. He had four siblings. Henry Ford was only educated until the eighth grade at Springwells Middle School. William Ford had high hopes for Henry to take over the farm, but he disliked working at the farm and found no delight in taking over. In 1879, Henry left home to pursue a career as a machinist in Detroit. Initially, he worked with James F. Flower and Brothers, followed by Detroit Dry Dock. When he was 12, he had a chance of witnessing at Nichols and Shepard's road engine. He was fascinated at the sight of seeing the operating process of the road engine. This was a significant memory from his childhood that paved the way for him to shape the world we are in today. He said, the first vehicle other than horse-drawn that I had ever seen. Hanging on to the inspiration from the road engine, in his farm workshop he built a steam tractor and a steam car. In 1885, Henry Ford repaired an Otto engine. What is an Otto engine, you might wonder? This was a large stationary single-cylinder internal combustion four-stroke engine. Once again, inspiration hit Henry Ford. He was prepared to experiment. In 1887, he built a four-cycle model with a one-inch bore and a three-inch stroke. This was followed by him being occupied with a two-cylinder engine by 1890. By 1892, Henry Ford was a proud achiever of his very first motor car. This motor car included a two-cylinder four-horsepower motor, two-and-a-half-inch bore and a six-inch stroke. Between the years of 1895 and 1896, his first motor car was driven for a total of about 1,000 miles. This allowed him to test his invention on the road, giving him the opportunity and room to fully comprehend what needs to be done for his second model. With his willpower and curiosity in building his motor vehicles, he rewardingly built three of them in his very own workshop. There is safety in small beginnings, and there is unlimited capital in the experience gained by growing. In 1891, Henry Ford began working as an engineer for the Edison Illuminating Company of Detroit. By 1893, his creative and innovative ways secured a promotion for him as chief engineer. His self-driven determination was starting to become fruitful. Three years after, he accomplished the completion of a self-propelled vehicle and named it the Ford Quadricycle. In the same year, Henry Ford met Thomas Edison. Ford worked for Thomas Edison for a few years until he supported and approved the projects and experiments that Henry was working on and asked him to pursue his dreams. Henry was now encouraged more than ever. With this encouragement in mind and determination in his heart, he successfully built the second model in 1889. Henry Ford was sprinting. Year by year he was achieving, he was reaching for unconventional ways of life. However, Ford's success took an unexpected turn when he joined William H. Murphy and founded the Detroit Automobile Company in 1899. They began the production of automobiles. Henry Ford was not too keen on continuing as the automobiles were of low quality and priced higher than their worth. These business ventures collapsed in 1901. But soon, Henry Ford was up on his feet and kicking back. In the same year, 
Henry Ford, together with C. Harold Wills, was able to successfully design and build a 26 horsepower automobile. With the success of Henry and Harold's latest innovation, Murphy from the Detroit Automobile Company decided to power up a new company under a new name, the Henry Ford Company. Ford was the chief engineer. However, in 1902, Murphy decided to invite Henry M. Leyland as a consultant. Henry Ford, not too delighted with this, left the company that holds his very own name. Leland remained in the company when Henry left and renamed it the Cadillac Automobile Company. Be ready to revise any system, scrap any method, abandon any theory, if the success of the job requires it. Ending this chapter in his life, together with Alexander Y. Malcolmson, he launched Ford and Malcolmson Limited. In 1903, the company was named Ford Motor Company. Here, Ford created a design that set an astonishing record by driving one mile in 39.4 seconds. This extraordinary event led the Ford brand to be recognized all over the USA. Henry Ford's Model T appeared in 1908. Model T was affordable for many Americans at 825 US dollars in 1908. Model T was not only inexpensive, but simple and easy to drive. The introduction of Model T at affordable prices was very valuable in the coming years as the majority of Americans began driving it. Ford ensured that the word went around about his new product. He used every marketing tactic possible to publicize the Model T. Few years down the line, Ford introduced the Model A in 1931 with a total output exceeding 4 million. The following year, he introduced a car that was unique and unmatched, the V8. The V8 had an eight-cylinder engine. I will build a motor car for the great multitude, constructed of the best materials by the best men to be hired. After the simplest designs that modern engineering can devise, so low in price that no man making a good salary will be unable to own one and enjoy with his family the blessings of hours of pleasure in God's great open spaces. This automobile genius was making headlines. He was aiming arrows and hitting targets. How did he manage to come so far? Ford was kind and considerate towards his employees, but he was facing high employee turnover. Ford was smart and intuitive. He understood how he needs to shape his employees to have the best output. He increased the minimum daily wage from $2.34 to $5.00. US This move again made the headlines. His turnover rate took a drastic new turn. In addition to this, the best employees from all over town were crowding around Ford. Now, his employees were bringing in experiences, skills and knowledge. Thus, accelerating productivity and dropping costs and time spent on training. Along with this change, he introduced a five-day work week consisting of a 40-hour week. Henry Ford entered the airline industry during the time of World War I by building Liberty engines. A few years later, after the war ended, Henry Ford took the business to the skies by acquiring the Stout Metal Airplane Company. His most successful aircraft was the Ford 4AT Trimotor. However, by 1933, as a result of the Great Depression, Ford decided to shut down the airplane business to avoid further losses. Being extremely successful in his industry and having acquired what he always dreamed about, he started working on his mansion in Michigan, which was designed by four architects. His mansion is 31,000 square feet and consists of 56 rooms, an indoor pool, and a bowling alley. On the upper level, Henry had a laboratory where he worked on his engine designs. The 1,300-acre estate also consisted of a greenhouse, an electrical power plant, boathouse, riding stables, a children's playhouse, and a treehouse. Part of the estate is now open to the public as a historical landscape and a museum. Ford also had vacation homes in Florida and Georgia. As Henry grew old, he suffered multiple strokes, and with his health weakening, he handed over the company responsibilities to his grandson, Henry Ford II. He passed away in 1947 
aged 83 with a net worth of $200 billion. This significant individual made such a difference in the world that we are enjoying his hard work and accomplishments that are relevant even today. The Ford Company, founded in 1903, is standing with its head held up high in honour of Henry Ford by serving its consumers worldwide with automobiles, luxury vehicles, commercial vehicles, automotive parts, pickup trucks and SUVs. This is Henry Ford, the innovator who made an impact on the world we live in today.